whether it was through a fellowship program or through a language program. If you're doing South Asian studies, you've come through AIS at one point or another. It's, it's almost like a rite of passage. AIS is, is different in that it's very particularly geared towards people who are entering a profession that requires a careful study of some subject in India. Uh, so, it's, so it's unique in this way. And because it's unique in this way, it's really vital because there's nothing else that can compare. The mission of the organization is to promote Indian studies in the United States. It's really the study abroad programs where students are first exposed to India and they sometimes then come back on our other programs. Thank you all for welcoming us to your beautiful country and your beautiful city. This is our fourth year uh, here working with the American Institute of Indian Studies. Uh, it's been a very strong partnership. Uh, we are delighted to be a part of it. We teach about 16 languages where they are spoken so that there is a lot of exposure beyond classroom hours. There are a lot of opportunities for community interaction, cultural immersion and social interaction. Our teachers are really fantastic and the classes are only four or five people so we have a lot of personalized attention and it's often really fun too. I think immersion is the best way to learn a language, maybe the only way to truly become fluent in a language. For my first AIS language course, there was a um, AIS fellow that spoke at the orientation, and I distinctly remember thinking to myself, oh, it would be really amazing if I could come back as a fellow one day. And AIS gave me the opportunity to do that, and I'm very, very grateful for that. AIS, I think, does really a superb job of supporting early emerging scholars as well as those who are more well established in their professions. And it is one of the few grants that allows you to spend a substantial amount of time in India and allows you to actually be able to have a lot of contact with local scholars and local institutions, partly because the AIS has very robust institutional contacts in India. Wherever I went, I was encountering people who uh, knew AIS fellows or were AIS fellows or had some interaction with AIS in one way or another. Um, and that environment, actually throughout all of my career, has really supported me. Creative Arts Fellowships are available to accomplished practitioners of performing arts and creative artists who demonstrate that coming to India would enhance their skills. These art fellowships are important because they allow artists from the United States to have a, a genuinely authentic experience with Indian culture, Indian arts, and the Indian environment. We have two world-class archives located in Gurgaon, and one is the Center for Art and Archaeology devoted to the built heritage of India, art and architecture. We have a team of researchers, photographers, surveyors and draftsmen who go to the site, document monuments and museum collections. 
our archives are the only archives which are available anywhere in the world on Indian temple architecture. The other is the Archives and Research Center for Ethnomusicology, which is a world-class archive of music, dance, and performance traditions. This is a repository. We have a collection of well over 25,000 hours of recorded music. We've continuously tried to work right from the beginning to have these collections brought to India where people from India could refer to them. In the past 30 years, it has become widely renowned as a model for archiving and the high quality of the collections that have been deposited here over the years. We've been working on this virtual museum project. It's called the Virtual Museum of Images and Sound. That has kind of mini exhibitions inside it, like little galleries. We are also putting up exhibitions online, which are created on different aspects of Indian art, architecture, history. I wouldn't like to boast, but the scholars all over the world who are working in these fields know about the centers. AIS prides itself on the kind of service that it offers, and it's a very warm and friendly and caring kind of service. It's an amazing organization and only one of its kind, right? Which is, you know, run completely by American academics in collaboration with Indian colleagues. They have a special kind of infrastructure in place that, you know, really facilitates cultural learning, cultural immersion. I also want to say it supports the research of my students. None of our graduate students can even do their work if they do not get AI support for their language training or for their intellectual, you know, their doctoral dissertation work. My high point really is to see students come to India as study abroad program participants, returning as language program students and then as senior scholars. It is such a matter of pride. It's like a family network in a way and once you become associated with it, uh, people often continue to call on AIS's services even when they're not actually here on a fellowship or on a language program. It's a social network, it's a place for us to get together and to talk about something and there is no other opportunity for that. AIS creates a very special community of scholars and students that I haven't found anywhere else. So they're just a fantastic, you know, friend for any scholar who's wandering around India.